everyone. I'm Janelle Nichols, and this is Memory Matters for All Ages. Well, today is the culmination of eight months of work for our guest, and eight months of her heart, and uh, I, I hope eight months of very, very good information. This is the last program for Memory Matters for All Ages. And usually the fourth week of the month, we have talked about uh, caregiver issues. We've talked about brain games, memory fitness. Well, today we're gonna talk about everything. We're gonna just tie everything up. But first of all, I wanna welcome back Catherine Kilpatrick. It's been a pleasure and an honor I've to work with it. you. I, Janelle, this has just been, you it's were the been perfect good. person to do this oh, well, with. Thank and you. I just, thank I'm gonna you. miss. I'm going to miss it, yeah. too. But we'll just have to do fun things now. There we go. You know, isn't there that what we, we say? You know, we need to kind of balance and break it up a little <laughs> we bit. We keep saying that, Kathy, and, yes. you know, after I get relocated and moved and all that, we yeah. might do a half-hour show here and there and interview mm -hmm. some people. But right that now, it's like, I, I've got to get moved. <laughs> well, you know, I remember when you first approached me about this, and it's coming up on almost a year yes. that, that you had this this desire this and this vision for this program. And I was very excited about it, and I was... Um, thrilled that you asked me. I know that as a speech language pathologist, um, that you worked in, you have worked with all uh, different groups, and you have over 40 years of experience, author, um, and I know that this was a real heart for you. This was from the heart to get information to people and get them start thinking about the future, preparing about the future, not ignoring things. Mm -hmm. And I hope that 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 we have succeeded in that to get so. the information to the the citizens of Hudson in mm. this, but uh, it's it's been fun. Um, I know that you've talked about uh, successful aging, Alzheimer's, early dementia, all the topics that we've covered. Right. It, it's been a lot of fun. It has it's been and, a lot of fun. And what's interesting is because. I've done so many programs for you, and we have collaborated on different mm -hmm. things in all levels of the community. Mm -hmm. uh, that uh, you know, you bring forth examples that are so helpful. So sure. I think it was a nice, you know, compliment. As we wrap up this this eight month series, give us some things to to consider as we tie everything together today. All right. Uh, near and dear to my heart is the fact that this is a journey with a loved one. You know, we've got the multitasking and that was just because we called it Memory Matters for All Ages and we wanted to handle memory concerns of those that are younger because they were always complaining about their memory and that fear factor of maybe I've got my grandmother's or my aunt's or my, you know, mom or dad's Alzheimer's disease. Maybe that's on the horizon for me. So we've taken care of that. But I think, uh, what we need to pay attention to for our own heart and soul as we are um, caregivers or just a friend that we know that has some memory difficulties, what are some things that can help us as we walk this journey? There's a lot of tips through everything else that we've done, but I want to get into um, kind of step back. And so the first thing is if you have someone, whether it's young onset or a little bit more advanced, uh, observe what interests them and what disinterests them. I think that's a really important thing. What frustrates them and what agitates them. And we had talked in a previous program about um, creating a lifestyle care plan and I'll make a reference to that link so you can go back and watch that. But I think that what makes me the saddest is going into a home where their caregivers are wonderful, but the person with dementia, whatever level, is in front of the TV, often sleeping, disengaged. If they have the hearing loss, then the TV's turned up loudly. And, you know, so what, what might be helpful to someone? And then realizing activities are everywhere. And I love going in, you know, when I go in and start doing this first assessment, you know, it's kind of like someone knows that they can't do some of those things. And I don't do the formal testing that you would get if you had a geriatric assessment, but I need to know what their strengths are. And then I start just kind of picking up some books. That's the great thing about home health or a photograph and start talking about that. And a person then starts to warm up to you. I mean, it could be five minutes of sorting the mail or folding the towels or looking through, uh, you know, maybe a book on, you know, golfing, you know, something that was interest. The Burpee Seed Catalog, oh, please bring it on real soon. Okay. So something simple, something Just, simple and, and mundane yeah, almost about I had one, real, real life. 
I had one gentleman who was at work, and his mom was okay by herself during the day, and she had a lifeline. And off the balcony, he had put 10 bird feeders. And he would just make sure that they were stocked. And sometimes she would just sit there for an hour or so and watch the watch birds the coming birds. and going. You know, sure. what can we surround ourselves with? And then the thing is, we have to modify. And this has been my big, I'm a speech language pathologist. What would you expect? There's hearing loss. There's vision impairment, um, memory difficulties, or mobility. So activities that they might do before might have to be modified. And that, again, was something we addressed. But I think that's the bigger picture. Uh, I have a program that's coming up um, real soon where I'm addressing about 500 caregivers. And this is the message I want to give them. It is a difficult journey, but if you can find some ways to maintain that connection, and then it's learning how to be in the moment. So like that woman with the sunset that we had talked about last time. Or there's another chicken soup story where the gentleman's at church with his wife, and uh, when the offering plate comes by, he threw in some golf balls. Mm -hmm. And instead of being horrified, this was his life. And so he did not, you know, to him giving that was very significant. And those are just cherished memories, and I think that's the part. I remember one day driving with my mom, and uh, she wasn't severely impaired, but you know, I, she was frustrating me at that moment. And it was one of those like, don't forget to put on your jacket or you know whatever. And you know, my thought was, oh mom, please, you know, I'm over 60 years of age, I'm okay. And then I just got caught up short, and I went like, oh my goodness, you know what? Next year she may not know my name, may not know who I am, and bring it on. Whatever you want to talk about, Mom, is fine for me. So, um, you know, and sometimes kids change the energy, keep things adult-like, and, you know, it's about sharing time together rather than being perfect. So we played Scrabble, and if the words up there were spelled incorrectly, who cares? It was just spending time together. So slow down and smell the roses. Amen. Cherish the moments. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. Not all knowledge. of them are going to be wonderful, no, but no. then that's where you work no. on getting your own balance, too. Sure. Well, I think uh, people need to understand that there are going to be memories for them when that person, when that loved one is gone, right. too, right. Like, like you shared. Yeah. Well, like you know, people talk about, in some cases, childbirth, and it's like, oh, I'm never going to have another right. child, and right. then down the road they're having four and five and six. Right. So you know, some of those things that were not so comfortable right. you know, can fade, and you just hold on. To, to different things. Absolutely. Yeah. I, I do want to talk a moment about your blog. Um, uh, we've talked about this in the past. At the end of the program, watch uh, for Kathy's website information. It will be on the screen. And she writes a blog in conjunction with whatever we talk about on this program. Yeah. And you get more detailed information. But there's one link on there that I would urge everyone to visit, and it's called Creating Meaningful Visits. Mm -hmm. And I just love the tips on there. Uh, Kathy talks about um, just weekly visits or, uh, you know, just a casual visit. But then she also gives in, uh, information about holidays, mm -hmm. uh, birthdays, family reunions, things that we don't think about to make that experience better. So I would urge everyone to check out the website um, at the end of the program. Uh, Kathy, can you give us some, some tips to do? So, yeah. Something that we can think about this week as, as we, we go on. A few little things. First of all, assess your energy level. And one of the things that I find myself doing in home health, if I'm really dragging or I've had a negative draining experience or, or whatever, I may pull over, lock my doors, crack my windows, and put on some music, just do some breathing and get recentered. So if you're going to visit a loved one and you've had a day, <laughs> wherever, at work or at home, you know, don't go running in and spend all your time talking about your stuff. You know, shorten the meeting the time together for five minutes and just get something to get yourself back um, onto to center so that you don't bring that energy in. And again, looking at your attitude and just little things to do. I mean, there's sometimes that's the most Im important. I just 
adore my sister-in-law, and her mom ended up um, with Alzheimer's disease and advanced to severe stages. And I would go and visit in Massachusetts periodically, and she would have little decoration things that she had done for holidays and stuff, and things that her mom would sit with her and do. And you know, did she, she might not even know that it was her daughter, but she knew the energy, and it just it brought smiles to everybody's face, including the staff, because they could see how infectious that was. And what has special meaning to you because there may be things that you enjoy so when I went home recently I went to visit my aunt and we went through old pictures and she's fine she's hitting just had her 90th birthday but I said I want to see your old pictures I'm gonna spend the night and then I brought some of my old pictures and that was just you know a very special time sure. together sure. and uh, again praising my sister-in-law how can you bring people that are more reluctant into the circle because sometimes we have family members or friends who are afraid, don't know what to say and do. And so I noticed when we would go, like at Mother's Day one time, and I was in town, and so other family members of hers who were reluctant to go by themselves mm -hmm. joined. Sure. So I think that's really important. Well, Kathy, I think this entire eight-month series has been your message to the community. Mm -hmm. And I think, uh, I know it comes from your heart, but I think your message is don't ignore don't hide your head in the sand. Mm -hmm. Face these issues mm -hmm. head on. Things can be improved. Sometimes it can be a simple thing. Like we talked, uh, I think it was even last week, we talked about hearing loss mm -hmm. and that it could be something as simple as wax in your ears. Right. So don't ignore, don't ignore it. Right. But also very practical advice. Uh, I, I love your tips. Mm -hmm. um, yes. And I think I also appreciate you encouraging us to look at that person individually. What do they love? What did they do for a living? What did they do for a hobby? Mm -hmm. um, like the, the son who put the bird feeders out. I mean, that's, that's wonderful. Yeah, that's really so, right. so things and that, like that. You know, that was rewarding on many levels. And it also was a teaching moment for other people that came by. Absolutely. And I think that's what we're hoping, you know, Absolutely. to create with this. And that's why we have such a good, you know, going back and forth. Mm -hmm. Because we do, you know, understand at the same level. I, I agree. And I think a lot of it is common sense, too. Absolutely. And taking the time to think through mm -hmm. the situation rather than throwing your hands up and saying, well, there's, there's nothing we can, we can do. And I think that's why doing the multitasking one, my concern mm -hmm. is if we get so busy and self-absorbed in little things, what's going on around us Absolutely. that you know, we may, you know, as I heard someone say um, when their mom had passed away, oh, I wasn't ready. Mm -hmm. But that person wasn't around very much because it was uncomfortable mm -hmm. for them. And that's that's understandable. Everyone handles it differently. Absolutely. Know, absolutely. And that's okay, too. And that's okay. But hopefully sure. there'll be some that could use some of this to maybe handle right. it a little differently. Right. And sometimes you learn from, you know, other situations, which mm -hmm. is what I wanted to kind of end up with today. Uh, I've often had people come up to me and say, I wish that I had known this before. And I say, no, you, you have messages, you know, for others. So my thoughts would be, what did you learn? Okay, what helped you cope? These are things you can share with others that are walking the journey. How can you enlighten others? Some little tips. If you had to walk this path again, what would you do differently? Okay, and if this were you, what would you want others to do for you? And last of all, but not least, is what were your gifts in the journey? Very good. Well, I want to thank our audience for being with us with, for the last eight months. Kathy, it's been a joy and a pleasure. Thanks. Thank you so much. Do you have one final quote to send us on our way? I'm going to end with Mother Teresa. How perfect is that? It is not how much we do, but how much love we put in the doing. It is not how much we give, it's how much love we put in the giving. Thank you very much, and thank you to all of you who have watched us faithfully for the last eight months. Now you go and make it a great day.